Phases of Clinical Research, Wikipedia Article Audio The phases of clinical research are the steps in which scientists do experiments with a health intervention in an attempt to find enough evidence for a process which would be useful as a medical treatment. In the case of pharmaceutical study, the phases start with drug design and drug discovery then proceed on to animal testing. If this is successful, they begin the clinical phase of development by testing for safety in a few human subjects and expand to test in many study participants to determine if the treatment is effective. Summary Clinical trials involving new drugs are commonly classified into four phases. Individual trials may encompass more than one phase. A common example of this is combined phase I-2 or phase II-3 trials. Therefore, it may be easier to think of early phase studies and late phase studies. The drug development process will normally proceed through all four phases over many years. If the drug successfully passes through phases I, II, and III, it will usually be approved by the National Regulatory Authority for use in the general population. Phase 4 are post-approval studies. Before pharmaceutical companies start clinical trials on a drug, they conduct extensive preclinical studies. These involve in vitro and in vivo experiments using wide-ranging doses of the study drug to obtain preliminary efficacy, toxicity, and pharmacokinetic information. Such tests assist pharmaceutical companies to decide whether a drug candidate has scientific merit for further development as an investigational new drug. Preclinical Studies Phase 0 is a recent designation for optional exploratory trials conducted in accordance with the United States Food and Drug Administration's 2006 guidance on exploratory investigational new drug studies. Phase 0 trials are also known as human MICRO dosing studies and are designed to speed up the development of promising drugs or imaging agents by establishing very early on whether the drug or agent behaves in human subjects as was expected from preclinical studies. Distinctive features of Phase 0 trials include the administration of single subtherapeutic doses of the study drug to a small number of subjects to gather preliminary data on the agent's pharmacokinetics. Phase 0 A Phase 0 study gives no data on safety or efficacy, being by definition a dose too low to cause any therapeutic effect. Drug development companies carry out Phase 0 studies to rank drug candidates in order to decide which has the best pharmacokinetic parameters in humans to take forward into further development. They enable go-slash-no-go decisions to be based on relevant human models instead of relying on sometimes inconsistent animal data. Phase I Phase I trials were formerly referred to as first-in-man studies but the field generally moved to the gender-neutral language phrase first-in-humans in the 1990s, these trials are the first stage of testing in human subjects. They are designed to test the safety, side effects, best dose, and formulation method for the drug. Phase II Normally, a small group of 200 healthy volunteers will be recruited. These trials are often conducted in a clinical trial clinic, where the subject can be observed by full-time staff. These clinical trial clinics are often run by contract research organization who conduct these studies on behalf of pharmaceutical companies or other research investigators. The subject who receives the drug is usually observed until several half-lives of the drug have passed. This phase is designed to assess the safety, tolerability, pharmacokinetics, and pharmacodynamics of a drug. Phase I trials normally include dose ranging, also called dose escalation studies, 
so that the best and safest dose can be found and to discover the point at which a compound is too poisonous to administer. The tested range of doses will usually be a fraction of the dose that caused harm in animal testing. Phase I trials most often include healthy volunteers. However, there are some circumstances when clinical patients are used, such as patients who have terminal cancer or HIV and the treatment is likely to make healthy individuals ill. These studies are usually conducted in tightly controlled clinics called CPUs, where participants receive 24-hour medical attention and oversight. In addition to the previously mentioned unhealthy individuals, patients who have typically already tried and failed to improve on the existing standard therapies may also participate in Phase I trials. Volunteers are paid a variable inconvenience fee for their time spent in the volunteer center. Success Rate Before beginning a Phase I trial, the sponsor must submit an investigational new drug application to the FDA detailing the preliminary data on the drug gathered from cellular models and animal studies. Phase I trials can be further divided. Phase 3 Success Rate 2 Phase 4 Overall Cost Once a dose or range of doses is determined, the next goal is to evaluate whether the drug has any biological activity or effect. Phase 2 trials are performed on larger groups and are designed to assess how well the drug works as well as to continue Phase I safety assessments in a larger group of volunteers and patients. Genetic testing is common, particularly when there is evidence of variation in metabolic rate. When the development process for a new drug fails, this usually occurs during Phase II trials when the drug is discovered not to work as planned, or to have toxic effects. Phase II studies are sometimes divided into Phase IIA and Phase IIB. There is no formal definition for these two subcategories, but generally. Some trials combine Phase I and Phase II, and test both efficacy and toxicity. Some researchers argue that Phase II studies are generally smaller than they ought to be. Phase II clinical programs historically have experienced the lowest success rate of the four development phases. In 2010, the percentage of Phase II trials that proceeded to Phase III was 18%, and only 30.7% of developmental candidates advanced from Phase II to Phase III in a large study of trials from 2006 to 2015. This phase is designed to assess the effectiveness of the new intervention and, thereby, its value in clinical practice. Phase 3 studies are randomized controlled multi-center trials on large patient groups and are aimed at being the definitive assessment of how effective the drug is, in comparison with current gold standard treatment. Because of their size and comparatively long duration, Phase 3 trials are the most expensive, time-consuming, and difficult trials to design and run, especially in therapies for chronic medical conditions. Phase 3 trials of chronic conditions or diseases often have a short follow-up period for evaluation, relative to the period of time the intervention might be used in practice. This is sometimes called the pre-marketing phase because it actually measures consumer response to the drug. It is common practice that certain Phase three trials will continue while the regulatory submission is pending at the appropriate regulatory agency. This allows patients to continue to receive possibly life-saving drugs until the drug can be obtained by purchase. Other reasons for performing trials at this stage include attempts by the sponsor at label expansion, to obtain additional safety data, or to support marketing claims for the drug. Studies in this phase are by some companies categorized as Phase 3B studies. 
While not required in all cases, it is typically expected that there be at least two successful Phase 3 trials, demonstrating a drug's safety and efficacy, in order to obtain approval from the appropriate regulatory agencies such as FDA, or the EMA. Once a drug has proved satisfactory after Phase 3 trials, the trial results are usually combined into a large document containing a comprehensive description of the methods and results of human and animal studies, manufacturing procedures, formulation details, and shelf life. This collection of information makes up the regulatory submission that is provided for review to the appropriate regulatory authorities in different countries. They will review the submission, and, it is hoped, give the sponsor approval to market the drug. Phase IIA studies are usually pilot studies designed to demonstrate clinical efficacy or biological activity. Phase IIB studies look to find the optimum dose at which the drug shows biological activity with minimal side effects. Most drugs undergoing Phase 3 clinical trials can be marketed under FDA norms with proper recommendations and guidelines through a new drug application containing all manufacturing, preclinical, and clinical data. In case of any adverse effects being reported anywhere, the drugs need to be recalled immediately from the market. While most pharmaceutical companies refrain from this practice, it is not abnormal to see many drugs undergoing Phase 3 clinical trials in the market. As of 2010, about 50% of drug candidates either failed during the Phase 3 trial or are rejected by the National Regulatory Agency. Phase 2-3 Cost The amount of money spent on Phase 2-3 trials depends on numerous factors, with therapeutic area being studied and types of clinical procedures as key drivers, Phase 2 studies may cost as much as $20 million, and Phase 3 as much as $53 million. A Phase 4 trial is also known as post-marketing surveillance trial, or informally as a confirmatory trial. Phase 4 trials involve the safety surveillance and ongoing technical support of a drug after it receives permission to be sold. Phase 4 studies may be required by regulatory authorities or may be undertaken by the sponsoring company for competitive or other reasons. The safety surveillance is designed to detect any rare or long-term adverse effects over a much larger patient population and longer time period than was possible during the Phase I-3 clinical trials. Harmful effects discovered by Phase IV trials may result in a drug being no longer sold, or restricted to certain uses. Recent examples involve c troglitazone, and rofcoxib. The minimum time period mandatory for Phase 4 clinical trials is two years. The entire process of developing a drug from preclinical research to marketing can take approximately 12 to 18 years and often costs well over $1 billion.